Welcome back to the lecture of normal growth, development, and puberty in children and adolescents. I am Dr. Amal al farmawi professor of pediatrics. In the first segment of this lecture, you learned about phases of the pediatric age group, definition of growth, development, and puberty, the importance of assessment of them, factors affecting in addition to general principles concerning them. This leads us to the next point, which is how to assess growth. For assessment of growth, we have to take anthropometric measurements along with assessment of teething as well as bone age. Anthropometric measurements are measurements of body size and proportions. There are so many measurements, but for you as undergraduates, we will only focus on these parameters. The weight, the height or length, and you will know the difference in a minute, body proportions, body mass index, growth velocity, skull circumference, mid-upper arm circumference, skin fold thickness, and mid-arm muscle circumference. You will learn how to use reliable equipment accurately and the correct measuring techniques in the clinical sessions. Here I'm going to explain how to interpret the results of measurements and use it for assessment. To know whether growth is within the acceptable limits or not, we can use growth charts or do some calculations or use online programs. Growth charts are the most accurate method. We plot measurements on growth charts and determine the percentile of the measured parameter. Serial blotting produces a line or graph. This line constitutes the individual child's growth pattern or curve. There are charts developed by the WHO and charts developed by the CDC and the later are the most widely used. You can download the charts from the added link to this slide. There are charts for boys and girls and for different age groups and for every measurable parameter. The 50th centile, which is the bold line in the middle, represents the mean. And all the values between 5th and 95th centiles are the normal range for age, which means plus minus two standard deviation from the mean. The weight is measured using scale, whether a baby scale if the child cannot stand steady or the standing scale if the child can stand. Now you have a number which is the weight of the child in kilograms. For example, if we have a girl nine months old and her weight is 9.280 kilograms, so her weight will be on the 75th centile, which is normal for age. Let me tell you some facts about the weight in the first year of life. The mean weight of a normal newborn is 3.5 kilograms. There is a loss of about 5 to 10 percent of this weight due to loss of extracellular fluid after birth. Then the weight is regained over 7 to 10 days. The infant gains 20 to 30 grams per day in the first three months of life then 15 to 20 grams per day for the rest of the first year. So by the age of four months, the infant will double his birth weight, and by the age of one year, the infant will triple his birth weight. Now, if you don't have gross charts, you can do some calculations using these formulas according to the age to know if the weight of the child is okay for age or not, but of course it will give you only one number, which is the mean. It will not show you the whole range of normal. After measuring the weight, we measure the height. We use stadiometer to measure the standing height of children. If the infant cannot stand without assistance, so we measure his recumbent height, which is the length, as you see in the image. We also can use regular tape against the wall if stadiometer is not available. 
Then plot the number that you get on the high chart for the corresponding age and gender. For example, if a boy is four years old and his height is 105 centimeters, so he is on the 75th centile, which is normal for age. And the normal range will be from 95 centimeters to 110 centimeters. Here are some facts about the height or length. The mean length of a normal neonate is 50 centimeters. The length increases 2 centimeters per month during the first year, so the infant will be 75 centimeters by the end of first year. Then 1 centimeter per month to the end of the second year. After the second year, you can use this formula for calculation of the height, so the child will double his height at the age of 4 years. After measuring the height, you have to determine if the child's body is proportionate or not. To do so, we measure the arm span in relation to the height. They should be equal in all age groups. We also measure the upper segment in relation to the lower segment. The upper segment is from the head to symphysis pupus, and the lower segment is from symphysis pupus to toes. In adults, the upper segment is equal to the lower segment, but in neonates, it is 1.7 to 1. Around 4 to 5 years, it's 1.4 to 1, and at about 10 to 12 years, they are equal as in adults. Actually, the body proportions in neonates are totally different from older children. In neonates, the head constitutes fourth the body weight and the upper segment is nearly double the lower segment. You know now that growth is not steady all the time and that there are spurts and plateaus and sometimes we need to have an idea about the overall growth of the child over a long period of time and to do so we take serial measurements of the height over a year and we add all the numbers together and convert it to centimeters per year and we plot the number on the growth velocity chart to determine if the growth velocity is within normal for age and sex or not. We came now to the body mass index which is the best indicator of obesity. It is calculated from a formula using the weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. We plot the number on the body mass index chart as usual to know if it is normal or not. This is for now the measurements of the weight, height, body proportions, growth velocity, body mass index, and we will continue the growth assessment parameters in the third segment of this lecture.